Hey, so happy Humber Wednesday. Uh, so, I thought I was going to be brewing on my uh, new system. Uh, it all came in. It's unfortunately, I'm looking at it, it's still in its boxes over there. Uh, we've got guys working down in the basement, uh, still trying to uh, get everything squared away. Uh, today I'm drinking, uh, this is uh, uh, the world's oldest brewer, uh, Hefeweizen. It is uh, Vahim Stoffen, Stoffener. Not really sure how to pronounce it, uh, but I'm drinking it uh, in the spirit of uh, what I'm brewing today. So I'm brewing uh, my first uh, stab at a Heffy Bison. My next door neighbor really likes Heffy Bison, so uh, thought I'd give it a go. So uh, let's see, we got uh, Holler Tau hops. I'm gonna do uh, one ounce of that, split up over two uh, hop additions. Uh, I've got the mash uh, already sitting in here, uh, mashed in at about uh, 153 degrees. I'm uh, gonna let that go for an hour. Uh, and then I'll get one more last spin on the old uh, deluxe all grain uh, system that I that I uh, got from Adventures in Homebrewing. So uh, again, ho hopefully next time I have the electric uh, system going on. And hey, so it's Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. And hopefully you're getting to do something fun that you enjoy to do, like like I'm doing today. So cheers. Okay, so I'm back. All right, so finished mashing and uh, fly sparging the uh, heavy vice and then I'm going to be calling this heavy vice and uh, malevolent leader hosen and that was a name that was uh, coined by my son uh, yesterday yesterday evening so uh, I liked it so I went with it so I did my first runnings and I kind of you know took some did some scribbling with some math here my first running was uh, 1073 well, actually it was 1073 at 124 degrees so that was uh, 1085 was the final gravity reading the second gravity reading was 1034 at 120 degrees, so that worked out to 1045. The third gravity reading was uh, 112, or excuse me, 1012 at 124 degrees, that worked out to 1023 for gravity. Uh, and then the bo before boil uh, gravity reading I got was uh, uh, 1033 at 118 degrees, that worked out for 1043, I believe. So before uh, boil gravity was 1043 uh, for I have six and a half gallons uh, so gravity units wise that is 279.5 and I think that to get kind of my target which is uh, a gravity of 1050 I'm gonna need to boil down to about uh, a little over five and a half gallons so I mark my spoon this is my high-speed uh, uh, volume measuring device so I mark my spoon with a rubber band so I know how to measure down to uh, five and a half gallons, uh, a little over five and a half gallons, so I should get the 1050 that I'm looking for. So uh, I'll see how this works. Math is fun. You know, I, I keep telling my son, hey, no matter what you do, even if you're a brewmaster, you know, you're going to have to, you know, if that's your career choice, uh, you're still going to have to use math. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll come back when I get a little closer. I'm getting starting to get, uh, looks like it, I'm uh, just under 200 degrees. So uh, crank up some tunes, have a, have a home brew, and, uh, you know, get ready for the uh, boil. Here we are right here at the hot break. Don't really get to film this very often, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to catch us on film. Of course, I have my uh, spray bottle ready of uh, water. I find that very effective. I'm telling you, a spray bottle is is amazing when you're when you're dealing with a hot break. Okay, here comes the first hot drop. Half an ounce of Hollertal. And that stuff smells good. Alright, there we go. I get it turning green. Okay, I'm gonna go so I don't mess this up. Okay, so for this batch we're using uh, White Labs. WLP 300 Happy Bison. Hope it works. And you know something cool is from my last batch, um, I did some grain har or some uh, yeast harvesting, and this is the. If I can get this out, this is the uh, yeast that I harvested from my last batch, which was a uh, 
It's supposed to be a California blonde. It's more like an IPA. You can see the little layer of yeast in the bottom there. It saves you a lot of money, and uh, I've used it now in a couple of batches, and it works really, really well. Okay, so uh, I'm taking a little break here. Uh, I've got about, you know, probably 20-something minutes till the next uh, next hop drop i got to do. So I want to do a couple of shout-outs real quick. Uh, first of all, uh, Josh Secor and Aaron Gross. Uh, <laughs> uh, what can I say about your videos out at the National Homebrew uh, comp or Conference competition? Um, it, it was very, 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 very entertaining. My wife would be horrified if I... Uh, if I went out there and uh, took some video, some of the <laughs> things you guys posted, but it was very entertaining, and I really like um, I really like Josh your your wrap up at the end there. That was pretty good. Um, you you, you uh, as a matter of fact, I think you even had John Palmer in the background on one of your videos when you were sitting outside somewhere a cafe or something with Aaron. Uh, anyway, it looked like a lot of fun, and I'm certainly gonna have to go there uh, next year. I'm looking at doing the uh, there's a I think there's a national homebrew or a homebrew homecoming conference in Philadelphia that my wife has kind of given me the green light uh, to go to in October. October, It's not too far from D.C. where I live, so uh, I should be able to get there. Uh, I'm going to do that. Uh, the Brood Palette. Dude, you scored an awesome interview with uh, John Palmer. Um, you're like the master of interviews. I've seen you do that twice now. The last time you interviewed somebody else. I can't remember who it was, the uh, Brewmaster, but... Uh, I don't know how you do that. It must, you know, I don't know if it's because you're a homebrew club or whatever, but I really enjoy your videos. Uh, you know, I appreciate the time you take to kind of, you know, explain through uh, kind of what you're doing. And um, anyway, don't worry about not posting every couple of weeks. Uh, your posts are awesome. Uh, so uh, look forward to seeing your next one. Uh, Molson, hey man, uh, your garden is freaking phenomenal. Uh, we have a garden in the back. Uh, we're actually reaping some uh, some green beans, and uh, I've got my hops growing. I've got Willamette and Centennial. The Centennial finally took off. I uh, don't know if I'm going to have enough of a harvest to actually use them this year. I'm going to try if I can. We'll see what happens. But uh, uh, anyway, Steve Molson, I you're, you're, uh, appreciate watching your, your videos. Haven't seen anything from uh, Under the Table Brewing in a while. Or not, I'm sorry, not Under the Table. Uh, uh, time for another one. Uh, yeah, a gentleman from New Zealand. Haven't seen any videos from you in a while. I think I saw you doing some kind of, you were in a bar and you were trying to a couple of different types of beers uh, that you made with different hops. Uh, but look forward to seeing some of your videos because you have a really cool uh, electric system that I am I just got an electric system. I want to set it up so uh, I like watching your videos. Um, under the Table Brewing, uh, uh, Nate and uh, and uh, the, the uh, Senior and uh, Fresh P. I mean, you guys are, you guys are probably the best uh, homebrew updates, uh, you know, very entertaining. Uh, you always have a lot of stuff going on. I don't know what you do in your day job, but uh, you have a lot of time to devote to homebrewing, and uh, you, you're very experienced, and I, I watch you guys and uh, try to learn what I can, uh, kind of picking apart what you guys talk about. But uh, appreciate all your updates. Keep them coming. I, I, for one, you know, watch them quite frequently. And i got to say, BrewTubers, you guys have been a very good asset for me. I just started doing this in December of this past year, so December 2014. The day after Christmas, I brewed my first batch, and it was an all-grain. I didn't even mess around with extracts. I jumped right into all-grain because I didn't know any better. Uh, I used that deluxe system for about, I don't know, uh, through, th through June, and now I've got my electric harm system that I'm ready to set up. So if you guys uh, have any suggestions, tips, whatever, please go to my video, uh, make a comment in the bottom, you know, subscribe, and, and tell me you know, uh, any pitfalls that you found, uh, so I don't, you know, burn something up or, you know, the one thing that I've kind of noticed is that you don't, uh, energize the elements without it being fully submerged. Uh, so I think I've got that, but if there's any other tips that I need to know that you can save me some headache, I really would appreciate it. And I promise I will put a lot of frequent updates to let you know how my, uh, brewery is going. I registered for the SJ pour, uh, this year. I'm excited to do it. I've got a uh, a gentleman that I work with who's going to help me collaborate on some local ingredients here in D.C. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm going to have him come over and help me brew. I don't think he's a brewer, but I'll, I'll get him into it. Uh, and I'm going to look to join some uh, local uh, brew clubs here in the area. So, anyway, uh, I'll come back in a few and uh, we'll wrap this up. Bye. So I forgot one shout-out. Uh, I forgot to mention Northern Accent. Dude, you're, you have some really good videos, too. I'm really enjoying your hop experiment videos. Uh, you put some pretty good thought into your to your reviews. The only thing that I would say, if I had to critique you about anything, would be your choice of a football team. I mean, everybody knows that you know the Go Pack Go. You, you need to you need to you need to relook that. Maybe uh, perhaps Cowboys. Uh, I'm just saying. Anyway.
<clears throat> so happy homebrew Wednesday. Um, all right, so first of all, I'll start off by telling you that I'm drinking a Sculpin uh, grapefruit IPA, or grapefruit Sculpin, whatever it's called. And the reason that I'm drinking this uh, grapefruit Sculpin is because I need to treat myself because the brew day that I filmed earlier that I showed you clips of ended very, very badly for me. I had made my very first Hanky Bison um, successful brew. Uh, by all accounts, uh, my account, um, you know, went well, hit all my target gravities, and put the yeast in, and just as I was getting ready to cork it up, and this was Father's Day, no less, just as I was getting ready to, uh, actually, right after I put the uh, cork in the airlock in, uh, I go to pick it up with this handle uh, that I'll probably never use again, uh, and you probably already know what happened. Pick that thing up, go walking about two steps across the kitchen, uh, and it popped out and exploded into a million pieces. And I cannot believe, I'm lucky that the flying shards of glass and Heffy Bison, uh, recently yeasted, yeast added Heffy Bison, uh, did not knock me on my butt and uh, cut me severely. Uh, I ended up with a little cut on my thumb and uh, on my knee as I was trying to pick up the shards of glass and my wife had to go scramble to get a wet vac to uh, clean up the five gallons of, of heavy bison wort uh, before it ruined our cabinets and everything else. So, good thing is, uh, hopefully that's the last time we have to do it, and that's why I'm kind of closing this uh, Happy Hungry Wednesday uh, up down here in my basement. Uh, so, I'll give you a quick tour here. Here we go. So, this is the uh, updated uh, basement here. So, we got the sink in, finally, kind of. They're almost done. Uh, installing the sink. I have about a 60 inch gap going across here uh, with these restaurant grade shelves that we uh, put in. That's where the chugger pumps are going to go. The three pots are going to go right here and then the electric uh, homebrew, uh, the electric uh, brewing control system will go right here next to the four prong outlet. Uh, so I got all this counter space uh, and this has ended up being my wife's uh, laundry room. Uh, so, we are just about there. We're in the final touches. Uh, and the last thing is they're going to put a hood uh, up here over where the, uh, where the uh, beer pots are going to be. And that hood, let's see if I've got that in here somewhere. Yeah, there's, there's the hood that's going to be, there's the hood that's going to be over that. It's a pretty high CFM hood, so I think it's going to, I think it's going to work. So anyway, that was, uh, <laughs> that was the end of a what was starting off to be a really good week. Uh, on the bright side, I learned something. Uh, I learned uh, a lot about the Heffy Bison. Uh, I think it, I think I, I was uh, on the right track. So I'm going to try to do it again. This time I'm going to be doing it with a uh, electric system, and I got to figure that out. Uh, but more importantly, don't trust those stupid carboy carriers uh, or get one of the straps. Maybe I'll try that. Anyway, if you uh, have any uh, advice for me on carrying the carboys, so I don't, you know have a dangerous situation like that again, please put it in the comment section. Uh, I don't want to relearn a, a bad lesson. So anyway, uh, until next week, I'll talk to you guys later. Happy homebrew.